of the uh, seniors are being introduced are being chosen to be co-captains here this evening across the way. Number 44, Tom Gatewood, and number 85, Walt Kowski, will act as acting captain for uh, the Irish of Notre Dame tonight. Now, here is the traditional march to midfield. who are shaking hands with Gatewood and Sikulski, number 48, Lord Cascio, and uh, number 89, Ken Cavanaugh. Right now, the uh, officials are being introduced to all of the captains. This is one of the formalities, of course, of uh, collegiate football. And certainly it adds to the spectacle it is collegiate football. And the Tigers looking for win number seven. Here's the toss of the coin. won the toss, elected to receive, LSU will kick off and defend the South goal. Right now, we'll tell you, this is the LSU Football Network, get set for the kickoff. The average American family on the road needs more than just an average oil in their car, because the heat that builds up in your car's crankcase from things like sustained high speed or heavy load driving can make a mess out of your motor oil, because heat through oxidation breaks down the components of ordinary motor oil. And when that oil cools, you've got a sludge-like substance that can lead to some pretty hefty repair bills. But with Texaco's Haviland Super Premium All-Temperature Motor Oil, you can put your mind at ease. Haviland Super Premium resists thickening under these high-temperature conditions. It also prevents rust, wear, and sludge deposits. Haviland Super Premium also protects anti-pollution devices better than ever, helping to minimize emissions. So, it might be a good idea to use Haviland Super Premium All-Temperature Motor Oil. That way, you'll know that you have a motor oil that can beat the heat. For a product you can trust, trust your car to the man who wears the Texaco star. Number 42, Dale Miller tees the ball up at the South 40. Dale and Simonick to the deep ones for the Fighting Irish. Miller will kick it off. To call the play-by-play, -play. here's the voice of the Tigers, John Ferguson. Thank you, Walker. Good evening, everybody. Greg Hill and Gary Timonick are standing inside the Tiger 5, and here comes Dale Miller up on the ball, and he boots it. It is going to number 22, Greg Hill. He's out to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 21-yard line, and has jumped at the 21-yard line. Several Tigers, including Gary Champagne and Boyd Perry, are on the tackle. It is first and ten for Notre Dame at the Notre Dame 21-yard line. The Tigers were bested by the Irish at South Bend last year, three to nothing. LSU in the white jerseys, and in the dark ones, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Quarterback is Cliff Brown. Andy Huff is at fullback. Brown takes the ball, gives off to Huff, gaping hole in the middle. He rams through to the 30-yard line, spins off to the left, and is dumped at the 35. Joe Winkler makes the stop, and it is a Notre Dame first down and 10 yards to go. Out of the wishbone tee, the Irish blasts the head for 14 yards. It is Andy Huff, who has gained 253 yards already this year, starting at the prize. In the eye now, again, Huff. Shoots up the middle and picks up about three or four yards. And he's crowded down to the ground by Winkler and John Wood and Louis Cassio and Ronnie Essay. It is going to be a gain of two, second down and eight to go. The Irish nothing, the Tigers nothing, as we begin the ball game before a packed house at Tiger Stadium on the campus of LSU. Wide to the right. Right halfback, Larry Parker. The Irish running out of the eye this time. Brown again, this time off to the tailback. And uh, that is Ed Julius, who's racked up by Ronnie Espe, but he gains up to the 40-yard line. Packs in there a margin of three-plus yards. It's third down and five. Notre Dame at its 40-yard line, nothing. The LSU Tigers on defense, nothing. LSU in a four-man line with the linebackers crowded up right on the line of scrimmage, amounting to a 7-4 defense. Again, out of a normal set, here's Gullius running off left tackle, and he's trying for the first down. He's about a yard short. 
Tyler LaFosse leads the Tiger charge on the tackle at the Notre Dame 44-yard line, and that will bring up fourth down and the yards to go. On the field, number nine, the punter Brian Doherty, a 39-yard kicking average, and he will be kicking into a slight breeze. Tommy Casanova will be a single safety for LSU. It could be the Tigers have a kick rush on. The point of the down, the Fighting Irish 44-yard line. Doherty boots the ball. They do have the rush on, and Casanova calls for a fair catch at his 23. And so he boots the ball. 33 yards, Doherty does. Gatewood was first down the field, and Casanova makes the reception. There's no return. On their first offensive series, Notre Dame did run an essay twice. He stopped the play twice. Burt Jones will start at quarterback tonight for LSU. Number seven from Ruston. Has completed 48 passes out of 91 tried. Out of a triple I, the tight end will be Jay Michelson. He is set on the right. Hamilton is flanked to the right. Handoff goes to the tailback, Cantrell, and he darts over right guard, puts to the outside right, and his office beat at the 29-yard line, and Walt Patulski makes the tackle. The Tigers, interestingly, ran inside the position covered by Walt Patulski. Patulski, Katie, Marks, and Swinson in the defensive front four for Notre Dame. And the four linebackers are Mazurka, Patton, O'Malley, and Tobin, the deep three, Ellis, Stepaniak, and Crotty. Again, same set with Hamilton on the right against the four-man front. Second down and six. Jones back to pass. Catch the ball. Shoots it up there. Hamilton opens the three at the Notre Dame 40-yard line, and he's down on the Irish 35. First down and 10 yards to go for LSU. The Tigers from their 29. Go to the Notre Dame 35. It is a gain of 36 yards. Ellis makes the tackle. Hamilton had beaten Ellis on the pass route, a fly pattern down the far sideline. And the biggest play of the game is in the record books, and it's first and 10 LSU at the Notre Dame 35-yard line. Kegley set widely to the left. Out of a triple I, Michelson right. Gap six defense in the front for Notre Dame. Cantrell up the middle is stopped by Eric Patton on the way through a small gap in the defensive line. And Cantrell will net two yards on the play. Coming up next, second down and eight to go. The Irish got a first down and had to punt. The Tigers have a first down and now face second and eight to go at the Notre Dame 33 and there's no score here in the first quarter. A wide slot to the left. Wide side of the field is to the left, and the strong side of the line is to the side. LSU going toward the north, our left. Here's a handoff to Cantrell. He's dumped behind the line by a shooting right end, Fred Swenson. And so there's a loss on the play back out to the 36, and that will bring third down and 11 to go. We played almost four minutes of the first quarter here at LSU Stadium. Tiger Stadium, it's called. Mike the Tiger is on the scene here to cheer the homestanders on, and the Fighting Irish are making their first visit to the bio country that is in Louisiana's capital city. The third down, 11 play from the Notre Dame 36 could be a passing down. Jones has two receivers to the right, goes back in the pocket, cocks his arm, shoots one. It is complete at the 15. That's Hamilton. He's in for a touchdown, and the Tigers lead Notre Dame 6 to nothing. Ken Cleavis was the defender on the play, and he was whipped handily. A 36-yard pass play. Hamilton gets a touchdown, and the Tigers are full of zing, leading Notre Dame 6 to nothing in the first quarter. A 77-yard drive, a 36-yard pass play to Hamilton set it up, and then a 36-yard touchdown play. Jones passing to Hamilton. Here is the point after try. Paul Lyons holding, and Jay Michelson kicking. The kick is good. There's a timeout of the field with the score. The LSU Tigers, seven. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish, nothing. When it comes to choosing your gasoline, trust Texaco to have just the right gasoline for you. All their gasolines have one of the most advanced additive packages in any gasoline you can buy on the market today. They're especially designed for both better performance and for cleaner air. So when you need gasoline, no matter what kind of car you drive, trust the people at Texaco. They make great gasoline, and one is just right for you. The Tiger
Tigers go 77 yards in five plays. The big one, of course, was a 36-yard scoring pass from Burt Jones to his cousin Andy Hamilton, who earlier in the drive hooked up on another 36-yard pass. The Tigers lead it with 10.47 left to go in the first quarter by a score of 7 to nothing. So the Tigers strike early, throwing deep, giving Jones the time he needs to throw the football, and giving also Andy Hamilton time to work his way clear. He's done it twice. The Tigers hit it by a score of 7 to nothing. Here's the kickoff. Neil Miller again will be kicking and deep for Notre Dame. Greg Hill and Gary Zemanik. The kick is in the air. A spiral that is going to bounce at the 13 up in the air. Hill takes it at the 7. Comes back to the 15. Driving hard to the 25, the 27. And is knocked down hard by Norm Hodgins, Pepper Rutman, Gary Champagne, and Jack Kimmett. First and ten for the Irish at their 27. It's a seven-nothing game. The LSU Tigers over Notre Dame with 10:40 to go in the first quarter of play. This is the final game of the year for Notre Dame. LSU plays Tulane here next week. Strong eye set to the right. Here's a handoff going to Parker around the left side. He swings out deep, knocked down hard by Tommy Casanova after being slowed by Johnny Wood, the point of the down, the 29, maybe the 30-yard line. And Parker really took a shot from a hard-charging defensive quarterback on this particular play, Tommy Casanova. Now from the 29, it's second down, and eight to go for Notre Dame again, and a strong eye to the right with a split left end. Cleaney is sucked in tightly on the right. Brown to the right to throw. Shoots it out here, overthrows Parker on the near side of the Notre Dame 40. Incomplete. Third down and eight to go. The Irish out there 29. LSU ahead of Notre Dame, 7-0 first quarter. Roaring on the field, Boyd Perry for a linebacking assignment for LSU, and out will come senior Lloyd Fry. Boyd Perry, the Rangers youngster from Orange, Texas, the senior. Third down and eight to go from the 29. Notre Dame, Cliff Brown back. Draw play, gives to Julius. He picks up one yard and Ronnie Espe hits him hard around the knees and Julius gets only one. It's going to be a short game and in three downs, the Irish have picked up three yards. It's fourth and seven to go. Notre Dame and it's 30. Casanova again going deep along the now Jimmy Lazoo for LSU. They're back in facing now an odd man front, rolls back to the left, gives off the tail back off of Cantrell, and he rips off to the middle, fumbles the ball at the 26, and there's a scramble for it at the 26-yard line. Jimmy Artley says the whistle had blown, and Cantrell will get a gain to somewhere short of the 30, the 28. Potowski and Mike Cady make the tackle for the Irish. 
And Podolski is a tremendously big man at 260. Mike Katie's not quite so tall, but also weighing in at 260. So Cantrell on the blast up the middle and the fumble with a quick whistle, perhaps. It's going to be third down and two. I'll let you ahead, seven to nothing. First quarter, the Tigers with the football and trying now for a first down. Strong eye set to the right. Notre Dame has eight men on the line. Here's the option run by Jones. He has the first down. He's cut off his feet at the 34-yard line by Ralph Stepaniak, the defensive right halfback for Notre Dame. But the Irish were tucked in very tightly in the middle of the Tiger line. They did stop it up the middle. Had the play gone up the middle, it probably would have been stopped. But Jones elected on the option to run left, and he picked up the first down. First and 10 LSU at the Tiger 34. LSU leading Notre Dame by a score of 7-0 with 7 minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Open side of the field to right, and Hamilton is set to that side and up on the line. A five-man front. Here's Jones going back. Flips around. A throwback pattern coming. Hamilton running it. He's open again. Incomplete at the 40-yard line. A last-minute quick hand thrown up by Clarence Ellis. And the Tigers are making this one a wide-open affair, and Hamilton was in between the receivers in the Notre Dame defensive zone. Ellis and Crotty back deep, and Hamilton was in between them, and only a quick hand by a flashing Clarence Ellis prevented another touchdown for LSU. The Tigers lead 7-0 with seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Notre Dame on the defensive with a four-man front. And the linebackers have spread very widely to accommodate the wide receivers. Hand off to Cantrell. Here he comes to the left side. May not get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose one. Greg Mark and Rick Coleman are the men who make the tackle for Notre Dame at the LSU 33-yard line. Loss of one on the play. Third down and 11. LSU has Ledoux out of the game. And Kegley is in with Hamilton as uh, possible receivers. Cantrell and Shorey are in the eye behind Burt Jones. Let's see what Jones elects to do with the football on third down and 11. Cantrell undots the eye. Jones back to throw. Darts it up the middle. It's complete to Hamilton in midfield and down he goes. He cut in behind the linebacker Eric Cotton and in front of the safety man Mike Crotty makes the reception at midfield. Almost in the exact center of the playing field. And Hamilton has caught three big passes in this game. Two for 36 yards apiece, one for a score. And now this one for a total of 17 yards. 89 yards so far for Hamilton receiving the football, and he's already a record setter in that department here at LSU. First down at midfield, the Tigers, who are ahead of Notre Dame 7-0 first quarter. And Jones hands off to Shorey. Shorey shoots into the left side of the line, picks up about two yards. Thrown back hard by Eric Patton and Mike Crotty. Before the next play, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the LSU Football Network. And this is Radio 87 in New Orleans, WWL, with studios in the world-famed French Quarter. The Tigers are at the Notre Dame 48-yard line with the second down and eight to go, and in the process of a 33-yard drive to this moment. And here is Jones going back to throw again. Receivers down the field. He's knocked down, fumbles the ball. Notre Dame has the football. It's Quinton recovering, and it is a fumble. And Notre Dame will have the football at the LSU 36. A big tackle applied to Jones by Mike Zekas, number 79. So the Irish come up with a defensive gym and have the football in good field position. After Jones fumble, he was going back, it appeared, to put the ball in the air again, but as he took his arm back, he was smashed by Mike Zickas, and Swenson makes the recovery at the LSU 36. First and 10, Notre Dame. First break of the game for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. LSU leading 7-0. Brown, hands off, and that's Bill Gallagher running at fullback, and he's a marked man, picks up about a yard. Ronnie S. Day leads the Tiger defensive unit on the tackle just inside the Tiger 35-yard line. It will be second down and nine to go for Notre Dame. The backfield, Larry Parker at right halfback. At quarterback, Cliff Brown. At fullback, Bill Gallagher. 
And Ed Gullion, number 12, is at left half. Full house backfield, resembling, but not quite, a wishbone C. Reverse play, and Parker runs to the left side, outside tackle, breaks the tackle, and through Lloyd Bryant, he's inside the 30-yard line, down to the 29, and is stopped by Warren Capone. And number 17, Frank Racine. The ball is placed back at the 30, and it's going to be a third down and four to go for Notre Dame at the LSU 30-yard line. Winkler out, Hodgins in at safety for LSU. Tigers rotate on many occasions to all four of the deep positions, several men. Gatewood is wide to the right side. Great pass receiver looking for his 27th of the year in this game. Third down, four play. This is Parker right through the middle for the first down. He's off his feet at the LSU 22-yard line. John Wood makes the stop, and Parker comes up back against the green to make a charge down the field to the Tiger 22-yard line, and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish have a good drive going. Andy Huff back in at full back in place of Bill Gallagher. 4.15 remaining to be played in the first quarter here at Tiger City. LSU ahead of Notre Dame, 7 to nothing. Parker sets widely to the right. Here's Brown rolling to the left side, hands off to Huff. Huff over left tackle. Ram rides himself inside the 20, down to about the 19-yard line, and John Wood, with help from Richard Piku, number 88, who's in the game, makes the tackle. Second down at the 19-yard line of LSU, Notre Dame with the ball, and eight yards to go for the first down. Tackle, John Kondrick, 260 pounds on the right, and Dave Casper, 228 on the left. Kondrick actually a guard. John Dampier, 240-pounder. Here's Parker shooting right through the middle. A small crease in the Tiger defense. Inside the 15 to about the 13. And LaFosse will get credit for the Tiger tackle around the shoelaces at the 13-yard line. Notre Dame using power going straight ahead. And it's big weight advantage in the game. Beginning to show a little bit on this drive. Third down. A little more than a yard to go for a first down at the LSU 13-yard line, Notre Dame with the football. Out of the huddle, tight end Mike Sweeney, number 91, is on the left. Two wide receivers twinned up on the right side, Gatewood and Parker. Cliff Brown, the quarterback, off to Ed Huff. He's over left tackle, really valiantly trying for the first down, and he stops somewhere around that territory outside the Tiger 11-yard line. At the 12, a yard short of a first down. It's fourth down for Notre Dame. LSU ahead 7-0. The look to the bench. And apparently the Irish will go, but a timeout will be called by the officials for a measurement. The cane is extended, and Notre Dame is still almost a yard short of a first down. Needing to go to the 11. The ball is at the 12. Tom Gatewood requested that particular cane extension. LSU ahead of Notre Dame, 7-0, with 2.44 to go in the first quarter here at Tiger Stadium. And the Irish have the ball on a crucial situation. Fourth down, a yard to go at the LSU 12-yard line. The crowd here, highly partisan LSU, says hold the line. And a lot of Notre Dame fans are urging the Irish on. They set up with a strong wishbone with Gatewood to the right. Here is a smash to the right side. First down for Notre Dame as Andy Huff carries on a quick dive play down to about the 10. Just outside the 10-yard line, and many of the Tiger forward wall men, including linebacker Lloyd Fry, make the stop. But it was simply a dive or wham play straight ahead by fullback Andy Huff, and Notre Dame has new life and four downs to make 10 yards and the score. LSU ahead, 7-0. Two receivers left and right. Here's Brown off to Gullius. And he charges into left guard offensively inside the 10, down to about the 7-yard line. And Norm Hodgins fills him at the 7. Notre Dame using nothing fancy on this drive. And going behind number 8 sophomore quarterback from Pennsylvania, Cliff Brown. Brown weighs 185 and passing. 43 completions out of 90 tries for 518 yards, but he's playing it close to the best down deep. Second down, goal to go from the seven. Here's Huff over right tackle this time on a, about a half count inside the five, and he's down to the ground at the Tiger four-yard line. And the Irish are relentlessly moving straight ahead, and the tackle here is credited to Frank Racine and Tyler LaFosse. Frank Pomerico and Dave Casper blocking well in the left side 
of the line for Notre Dame and Kondrick and Zampier doing a fine job blocking on the right for the Irish. Third down from the Tiger three. Notre Dame with a great challenge here. Brown off to Gullius. Gullius the right tackle. He's way down right at the goal line but not across. Ronnie S.K. and John Wood and others on the tackle for LSU and the ball is just inches away from the Tiger goal line. Remember, the series started just outside the LSU 10, so we'll have a measurement to see if Notre Dame has a first down. The chain extension, any part of the ball hitting the chain would mean a first down for the Irish. Chain extension, and Notre Dame has just an inch or so to go for a first down with fourth down coming up. And just about three or four inches to go for a touchdown. So the Irish will call for timeout. Gatewood steps up and Notre Dame has called timeout with the ball just a few inches away from a touchdown at the south end and also about an inch away from a first down for the Notre Dame fighting Irish. So timeout on the field here at Tiger Stadium with the score. The LSU Tigers 7, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish nothing. You ever notice how your car seems to catch a cold in the winter or act like it's about to have a heat stroke in the summer? Texaco's Haviland Super Premium All Temperature Motor Oil can cure a lot of your car's temperature problems. If you want to lubricate and protect your car's engine to keep it from catching a cold or having a heat stroke, trust Texaco Haviland Super Premium All Temperature Motor Oil. Down below, here's the Tiger Band. Notre Dame has the football, fourth and inches. The ball no more than six inches away from the goal line. They can conceivably make a first down. But they are going to go for it. Of course, they've got the power to do it. And uh, they've worked their way now from the LSU 36. They've already used up 10 plays doing it. Running right straight ahead. Nothing fancy. Just straight, tough football. Utilizing, of course, their great leverage in the height and weight factor. Here we go. Cliff Brown has the Irish up to the line of scrimmage. Wedge formation with Huff, the fullback, and Julius behind Brown. He doesn't make it. Andy Huff is up the goal line, but doesn't make it. He's throw back a half yard. The Tigers have prevented Notre Dame from making a first down or a touchdown as Huff is really rocked up at the one-yard line. The entire LSU quick defensive line made a beautiful charge and a great deal of the start of the Notre Dame effort is eliminated by the quick defensive maneuver of the LSU Tiger line. And so LSU is backed up from its one with a great goal line stand. First down and 10 yards to go for LSU. Burt Jones, that quarterback for LSU, tight eye to the left. He hands off, and Cantrell hurdles a tackler behind the goal line, gets out to the line of scrimmage as he wiggles out to the one-yard line. Rick Coleman and Ken Sleezers on the tackle for Notre Dame. No gain, second and ten, Tigers in the deep hole after stopping the Notre Dame fighting Irish at the LSU goal line. 20 seconds to go in the first quarter here at Tiger Stadium, LSU holding a 7-0 lead. After a fumble at the 36 in LSU territory, the Irish failed to count. Here's Cantrell busting up to the four-yard line straight ahead. It's going to be third down. Eric Patton and Mike Crotty tackle for Notre Dame. The Irish, very big, rangy defensively. The horn sounds. That's the end of the first quarter here at Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, with the score of the LSU Tigers 7. The Notre Dame fighting Irish, nothing. We've got something to cheer you up at the new truck stop in April. A truly great goal line stand. The Tigers have the football on their own four-yard line. It's third and seven. 
actually on the play, the fourth down play, Notre Dame lost the foot. The ball just was just the nose of the ball was just inches from the goal line. They had a chance to make a first down, but of course they were unable to do so. The Tigers have taken over, run two plays now, trying to get a little room. If they could pop somebody through for seven yards down the hole, otherwise yes, they will have to cut it. But the defense did a magnificent job through the one of the great goal line stands because Notre Dame is by far a heavier football team. But the Tigers utilized their quickness and their emotions, stopped the Irish at the goal line, took the football over, have moved it out to the four, and now have a third down and seven situation. In total offense in the first quarter, LSU had 94 yards, Notre Dame 61. LSU had 89 yards in the air, Notre Dame none. The Irish 61 yards on the ground on 17 plays in the first quarter, and LSU got 8 yards on 11 rushing plays. Three first downs apiece. It's LSU 7, Notre Dame nothing. S.J. will be kicking. He's standing just inside the end line. The point of the down, the four-yard line, Mike Crotty, a single receiver, expecting a short kick. It's about a 36-yard average that S.J. is... Uh, Boasting right now, kicks a low line drive. Crotty receives at the LSU 42, and he comes rolling back down the field to the Tiger 37, and is bumped literally off his feet there by Lloyd Killen of Bossier City. 38 yards on SA's kick, a low liner. First down for Notre Dame at the Tiger 37. Logan Killen, 51, on his jersey, is from Bossier City, and he is the man who snaps back the ball on kicks. Flip Brown back in, going back for his first pass attempt, shoots it up the field, and as the gate was complete, inside the LSU 25-yard line, and he's rocked down by Joe Winkler as he rolls out of bounds at the Tiger 19, on the far side of the playing field. And so quickly, Notre Dame goes to the air and brings up a reception from the 37. 18 yards on the completion to Gatewood, and now Gatewood has caught his 27th, and now has over 260 yards, 360 yards in the year. And off goes to Parker, and he rams straight ahead for about a yard. Second down and nine. Again, Ronnie Este gets credit for the tackle, and... He is a man who has been all over this uh, defensive activity for LSU in the game so far. Notre Dame at the Tiger 18-yard line with second down and nine to go. The Tigers ahead, 7-0. Brown rolling off to the left side, sees open field, runs to the 15, he's down to the 11, and is racked up at about the 10 or 11-yard line by Capone, and the man who is yet to get up, Lloyd Fry. The ball is going to be placed at the Tiger 10-yard line, one yard short of a first down, as Brown wanted to throw but couldn't get the pass away and elected to run. Brown is one out of two in the air. Boyd Perry is in at the linebacker for LSU. Parker set widely to the right, covered by Nagel. Gatewood on the left, covered by Casanova. Handoff goes to... Number 12, Ed Julius, and he smashes into the right side of the line. Doesn't make the first down. It's thrown back by Lloyd Fry and Norm Hodgins at the 10-yard line. And so again, Notre Dame faces fourth down at a yard to go. And the Tiger defensive team is making it tough on straight-ahead runs by Notre Dame when the yardage gets to be very important down deep. LSU has been backed up a couple of times in the game, but still holds the lead 7 0. Fourth and a yard, and time is called by Jim Hartley, the referee. It appears that Hartley wants to talk to the team and get the team to ask the crowd to be quiet a little bit so that Notre Dame team can hear its signal. Notre Dame, interestingly, did not ask for a timeout on the play. Fourth down and one yard to go at the LSU 10. Notre Dame, after recovering an LSU fumble at the Tiger 36 earlier, has been in control of the ball game, but was stopped at the goal line and now has a crucial situation again. Fourth and one at the LSU 10. Brown, back to the right side, will keep the ball. 
as the Chiefs got the way, and he's thrown back to a loss by Norm Hodgins at the LSU 14-yard line on a keeper play to the right side. Brown had the blockers in front of him, but just wasn't quite quick enough to get away from Norm Hodgins, who shot the gap among the interferers and makes the tackle. The ball is put at the LSU 13. There's a loss of three. Paul Lyons is in at quarterback for LSU and the second unit offensive team all the way through. First to 10 LSU, and the Tigers have been very stingy down deep, and there's a timeout on the field. Timeout on the field here at Tiger Stadium with the score, LSU 7, Notre Dame nothing. Say fans, when it comes to supplying you with just the right gasoline, no one does the job better than Texaco. Texaco makes great gasoline, all with one of the most advanced additive packages in any gasoline you can buy. It's specially designed for both better performance and for cleaner air. And one is just right for the car you drive. Remember now, big car, small car, old or new car. You can trust Texaco to have just the right gasoline for you. John, I have to say, uh, I don't think I have ever seen the Tigers as emotionally high as they obviously are tonight. The defense has just been magnificent. Poor field position, the last two possessions, of course, has uh, put a lot of pressure on the defense, but Myers has the football now at the 13-yard line, a little bit better than what the last possession was at the one. New members of the team on the field, Keckley stays in his foot end for LSU. At left tackle, Steve Street. At left guard, Jimmy Elkins. At center, Logan Killen. Right guard, Russell Hell. Randy Russell at right tackle. And the right end is a man we'll pick up in just a minute. Here's a handoff to the tailback. And Chris Danton hurdles up over the left side of the line for about two yards. Jimmy Ledoux is in at splitback. Ken Cavanaugh is the tight end. Binkless is the fullback. Danton, who just got a call, is the tailback. And the quarterback for LSU is Paul Ryan. First unit defensive team still on the field for Notre Dame. They put the ball to 16. It's going to be second down and seven for LSU. Tigers in their own territory and holding a 7-0 lead. Danton out of the eye, gets a handoff, and makes an attempt around the left side. But Swinton is there, and there's no gain. Steve Street tried to block Swinton, but it was to no avail at all. Back to the 14 is where he's thrown at third down and nine. The LSU Tigers back at their 14-yard line and spending a major part of this quarter with 11.35 to go in it and a part of the first quarter in their own territory after fumbling at their own 36. Here's Lyons behind Killen, takes the ball, rolls out to the right, gives off to Dan, and Dan is back against the green, breaks out to the 25, and he's filled at the LSU 28-yard line by safety man Mike Crotty. First down, LSU. The play was designed to go wide to the right. Danton saw the gap open up on the left as the Irish were charging to the outside to stop the play. And so Danton saw the daylight enough to move ahead to the 28-yard line and pick up an LSU first down and give the Tigers some breathing room. Again, the Irish set up a 4-4-3 defense and rotate in the, to a four-deep secondary with two linebackers and the others up on the line of scrimmage. Again, Lyons runs the option left, gives off to Banklet, who has a good running average, and he picks up about two or three yards on the play. Katie's and Mark, and Patton stop him for Notre Dame at the 32. Second down and six to go. Banklet averaging eight yards a carry. He's had a couple of real fine games. Not blessed with blistering speed, but has great maneuverability and agility to get through small gaps in the defensive line. Second down and six. LSU at 32. Again, Lyons at quarterback hands off to Danton. And he rips it up over the left side of the line out to about the 35. And is knocked down there by Mike Kadish, a candidate for All-America out of Notre Dame. Third down, a little more than two to go for LSU on the hash mark on the far side. Here in the second quarter, LSU is facing a small breeze that's blowing into the stadium from the southwest. Ten minutes to go in the first half. Ledoux set Wiley to the right. He is from Sulphur. 
And Gerald Kegley from the state of Mississippi is to the left. Here's uh, Lyons back to throw, being chased, won't get it away. Down he goes at his 26. And Swinson is the man who's charging back there to make the tackle. And Lyons could not get the pass delivered to Kegley, apparently, as he was looking back to him. And all of a sudden, from his back, comes Fred Swinson to make the big tackle for Notre Dame. Fourth down, 11, from the 26 and a half or 7. Ronnie S.C. is in to punt. And Mike Crotty is a single safety, 10 yards deep in Notre Dame territory. Again, a low line drive spiral. Crotty backs up to take it at his 29. Ledoux overruns him, but throws him up enough for Crotty to be tackled at his 33. Chris Danton, who's injured on the play, and Ken Cavanaugh and Russell Held are down quickly under a 45-yard kick, and the return is good for about four yards. A timeout is called here on the exchange of the football as Notre Dame will take over first and ten at the Irish 33. The timeout on the field, the score is LSU 7, Notre Dame nothing. Remember, fans, no matter what time of the year it is, it's the right time to give your car's cooling system the guaranteed protection of Texaco antifreeze coolant. In summer, it protects against boil away. In winter, against freeze-up. And all year round, it protects against corrosion, rust, and clogging. So don't put off putting in Texaco antifreeze coolant. Fully guaranteed if used according to your car manufacturer's instructions. You'll find it at your local Texaco retailer. Nine minutes and eight seconds left to go in the first half. LSU in front of Notre Dame by a score of seven to nothing. Coming on a 36-yard pass from Burt Jones to Andy Hamilton. The drive was 77 yards. The Tigers took it in five plays. Two big plays, of course. In addition to the 36-yard scoring play, was a 36-yard pass from Hamilton to uh, Ham uh, from uh, Jones to Hamilton. Also, Notre Dame has the football first and ten at their own 33-yard line. 67,500 people or more have jammed their way into this huge stadium here in Baton Rouge tonight for this great contest. Gatewood out of the Irish huddle wide to the right. LSU in a seven-man line against the wishbone team. Cliff Brown at quarterback for Notre Dame goes back, draw play, gives to Julius. Wood has him at the line of scrimmage, no game. LSU has had some great experience against uh, defending the wishbone team. And it has not been, the wishbone has not been, a particularly productive offensive formation against the LSU defensive unit. Second down, 10. Notre Dame in its 33-yard line and setting up a double slot to the right. Lone remaining back is Andy Huff, fullback. Cliff Brown at quarterback. Dan Saul goes back, fades off to his right, running, passing, completes the Parker at the 41-yard line. And covering on the play, the Tigers, Tommy Casanova and Frank Racine. And Parker was going down to the turf as he made the reception at the 41. Third and two. Interesting comparison here in scoring. Notre Dame has not allowed any points in the third and fourth quarters this year against nine opponents. LSU scoring has been at its greatest in the third quarter. All totaled up in all of its nine games and almost as productive in the fourth quarter. Third down and two. Huff off to the right. Slowed down uh, back behind the line of scrimmage but breaks away and finally gets past Pepper Rutland who eventually makes the tackle somewhere around the 43-yard line. Andy Huff carries. A tackle application, not quite a first down. Made by Skip Comier, number 95, defensive end for LSU. And it's fourth down and just inches to go. And the Irish want another measurement. Kane is brought uh, on the field a short distance and is now being extended. And not quite a first down. Again, Notre Dame faces a critical decision though it uh, should not be a great one at this point of the football field and at this point of the game LSU holds a 7-0 lead with 7.5 minutes to go in the first half and the Irish have fourth down and just a couple of inches to go for a first down at their own 43 and apparently the Irish will kick that will be the percentage that will be called for in the game 
Irish trying to protect an eight and one season, but trailing LSU seven to nothing. Last week, Tulane Greenies next up on the LSU schedule next week, and a lot of the properties of this game are similar to those of the uh, the Tulane uh, Notre Dame game. High snap to Darney, the punter, and he boots it. Ledoux backing up on the ball, may not field it. The ball bounces at the two. The one is going to roll dead at the two-yard line. Gatewood, and also a guard down deep under there to uh, step on the ball after a 55-yard effort by Brian Darty. And so the Tigers will have the ball at their two, first down and 10 yards to go. It was in the game last year at South Bend that the Irish used the kicking game to keep LSU bottled up most of the late stages of the game. And eventually the kicking game was the difference. Tigers with Jones, Shorey, and Keckley and the Cantrell in the backfield. Joe Barrett center, handoff goes to Cantrell. He's racked up by John Mazurka at about the six yard line on an attempt straight ahead. Seven minutes remaining in the first half. The ball is at the LSU seven yard line and it is going to be second down and about five and a half to six yards to go for a first down. Tiger line up and the facing of five-man front set up by Notre Dame. Everybody on their marks, and here's a handoff to Cantrell, and he's crowded down by Mazurka and company at the line of scrimmage. An attempt at left tackle. They are going to say his forward advance has carried him up to the eight-yard line. Eric Patton in for a part of the tackle, and the Tigers are still trying to go inside defensive left end for Notre Dame, and that would be the area covered by Walt Pukowski. It is said by many people, that Pukowski will be a very important man on all-star teams this year and also on selections postseason. Two wide receivers left. Third down and about four. Jones off to Cantrell. Katie has him in line at about the 11-yard line as Cantrell was trying to get to the outside left. And so the Tigers will have Ronnie Este and Logan Killing uh, coming in. Joe Bear and Jones come out. It will be a punting situation. LSU just outside of the 10. Tigers have not had good field position since their first possession, which they took from their own 23 on in for a score. They've been backed up ever since. Notre Dame staying right with its game plan and with one uh, deep receiver, Crotty. They have a rush on the kicker on and a fair catch signal called by Crotty. He fumbles the ball, scrambles for it. Notre Dame pleases has it at the Tiger 45-yard line. Crotty made a fair catch signal and had to run up on the ball and came up short to the LSU 40. Crotty fumbled the ball, and finally it was the duty of Ken Pleasus to make the recovery at, uh, now they say officially, the LSU 46-yard line. Logan Killen was the man making a good charge on the ball, trying for a possession for LSU. And again, timeout is called in the game. With the place of the football, the Tiger 46, Notre Dame in possession. And as we've commented, Notre Dame has been in LSU territory ever since Jones fumbled the ball, going back for a pass at his 36. And the Irish moved the ball down to the goal line, did not score, and later gave up the ball at the 10-yard line. Time out on the field here at LSU with the score. The Tigers 7, the Fighting Irish nothing. When it comes to choosing your gasoline, trust Texaco to have just the right gasoline for you. All their gasolines have one of the most advanced additive packages and any gasoline you can buy on the market today. They're especially designed for both better performance and for cleaner air. So when you need gasoline, no matter what kind of car you drive, trust the people at Texaco. They make great gasoline and one is just right for you. Five minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the first half. LSU in front of Notre Dame by a score of 7 to nothing. Willie Townsend, number 80, is in his foot end for Notre Dame, and he's wide to the right out of the wishbone. Here's a reverse play with Townsend coming wide to the left. He's going to get some yardage. He's at the 40, the 35, the 30, the 25. He's at the LSU 15. He's out of bounds at the Tiger 12-yard line. Rushed out of bounds by Joe Winkler and Tommy Casanova. 
And the Tiger is injured on the plate. Johnny Wood has a turned ankle and hobbles off the field on the near side. Out of the wishbone with a flanker to the right. A split end to the right, actually. Townsend just into the game to the wide side of the field. Gullius took the handoff from the quarterback, rolled out to the right and handed on the reverse back to Townsend. Off to the near side and he bullets down to the Tiger 12. And again, the Irish are threatening. Brown, quarterback, rolling out to the right. Will run our pass. He'll run. Make the turn inside the 10. He's at the 7. Down he goes at the LSU 7-yard line. And Vince Machota makes the tackle. Before the next play, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the LSU Football Network. And this is WWL in New Orleans, Radio 87, with studios in the world-famed French Quarter. Again, the Irish are knocking on the door. Second down in about six. The ball at the LSU seven. And Notre Dame is taking one of its timeouts. On the ground, Notre Dame has picked up 108 yards so far in the air. Completed two or three passes for 26 yards. On the ground, LSU has gained only 29. While through the air, They've completed three of four passes for a total of 89 yards. Sandy Hamilton catching all three of them. But the Tigers have been backed up throughout the entire second quarter. Better part of the first quarter. They did score in their first possession. That's where we stand now. The defense has been just tremendous, although they did get kind of stung on that last play, a 34-yard gain on the reverse. 4.33 left to go. In the first half, LSU on defense, back to the wall again. They've got to play super defense to thwart the Irish. Previous possessions, Notre Dame has gotten down to the LSU 1, the LSU 13, the 43, and now the 7. Jim Gay is coming in for LSU a defensive end. He's been injured a couple of games, an outstanding sophomore from Hammond. And uh, Jack Kimmett is remaining in the game, a defensive right end. He's a junior for Baton Rouge, weighs 195, and he's in in place of the number one unit, John Wood, who has uh, injured an ankle or a knee and is being attended to on the near side. Second down and five at the LSU 7, Notre Dame again threatening with a double slot to the left. Hand off to Andy Huff. And he bullets to the left side and left guard down to the five. And Tyler LaFosse with company meets him there. Gain of two, Skip Comier also went on the tackle. It's third down and three at the LSU five. And again, the going gets a little sticky down deep. Notre Dame has controlled all departments of this football game since the recovery of a fumble at the Tiger 36 back in the middle of the first quarter after the LSU score. The Tigers lead 7-0. Sacked in for a scene at uh, one of the safety spots for LSU. Third down at the Tiger five. Three to go for a first down. Here's Huff trying at left tackle. He's in to about the three. Maybe the two and a half. Louis Cassio stops him at the three. So now it is fourth down and the yards to go again deep in LSU territory. One time the Irish had fourth and a couple of inches and Notre Dame again will call for timeout. Brown wants to consult the coach Parsegian. One time in the game, the Tigers held inches away from their goal line. Again, with a fourth down and one at the LSU 10. Hodgins spills Brown for a three-yard loss. And now again, the Irish have fourth down and one to go at the LSU 3 this time. Here comes Johnny Wood back in the game for LSU. And so, Cliff Brown, sophomore quarterback, is having a discussion on the far side of the field with the Irish coaching staff while Louis Cascio is talking things over with the Tiger staff on the near side. So the strategy is being developed now and Notre Dame has an important decision to make here trailing 0-7 to seven, with 3.36 to go in the first half about whether to go for the one yard the touchdown or for three points. And here comes Swift Brown back in the game. You can't help but uh, speculate if, if Notre Dame doesn't make it, how many people may be second-guessing Parsegian for not taking the three points. He's supposed to have a real good field goal kicker. 
So fourth down and one yard to go. Apparently the Irish will be trying for the first down or the touchdown. Gallagher's in at fullback. Or wingback and Huff is in at fullback and Julius at tailback. They're setting up a strong eye to the right. And Jimmy Artley is charging LSU with a timeout. And Louis Cassio and Cliff Brown go to the respective coaching staff again to talk things over. LSU leading 7-0. And the maneuvering is now getting uh, very intensive offensively and defensively. Notre Dame with the fourth down and one at the LSU three. The Tigers have stopped uh, the Irish deep in their own territory, extremely deep, on similar situations on fourth down play. Larry Parker will come in at wingback for Notre Dame. Bill Gallagher, normally a fullback, goes out. And so, Julius, Huff, and Parker will be behind Cliff Brown, the quarterback for Notre Dame. LSU has its number one defensive unit on the field. And let's see what the Tigers can do defensively as the Irish come up with their offensive set. A very tight, strong eye to the right. Brown, the quarterback, fourth down and one to go. Rolls off to the right, looking for a receiver. Shoots it in the end zone. It's complete! LSU again holds the pass intended for Parker and broken up by linebacker Lloyd Fry. So for the third time in the first half, the Tigers throw back the Irish on fourth down. And it's LSU football, first and ten at the Tiger three. Well, again, credit the Tiger defense for just, just magnificent play. You can't expect any better than that. Notre Dame has had excellent field position throughout the course of the evening, and twice now, deep inside the five, the Tigers have stopped them. LSU will try to be straightforward in this situation with Jones at quarterback. He hands off to Cantrell. Cantrell roars out over left tackle for about five yards, and is stopped hard at about the eight-yard line. Rick Coleman, number 38, is the man who makes the, the tackle along with Mike Zika, 79. Second down and five to go. The Tigers at their eight, ahead of Notre Dame, 7 nothing. This game is developing into another one of those real football epics. Here's Andy Hamilton to the right. Handoff goes to Shorey. Shorey is racked up at the 10-yard line. Floor of the play went wide to the right, and Shorey went over the right side of the line. Eric Patton and Zekas collaborate on the tackle shoulder to shoulder at the 10. Third down and three. LSU at its 10 yard line, ahead of Notre Dame by a score of seven nothing. This is the last game of the year for Notre Dame. LSU has tough two lane remaining next week. Burt Jones behind Jack Gilbert. Hamilton set to the right. Backfield strong left. Here's Jones hipping the ball, rolling out to the left side. He's crawling out to about the 12, and that's as far as he can go. Tough to block, big men like Fred Swenson and Greg Marks, weighing 235 apiece, and Crotty comes up for a part of the tackle, and they're placing the ball between the 11, well, about the 11-yard line. It's fourth down and two. Ronnie Este will be in the punt for LSU, kicking average into the game a little short of 36 yards. And again, Notre Dame sets up a single safety, Mike Crotty, and the Irish... If things go well for them here, we'll have great field position again. Here's a kick going to Crotty. Fair catch at the Tiger 46. And so from that point, for the second time, on as many putt uh, receptions, the Irish set up shop at the Tiger 46. 33 yards for SC on the kick, and we may have an infraction. Walt Patowski is being called from the sideline to make the decision. Man with the white cap, Jimmy Hartley.
Notre Dame going to the air so far unsuccessfully from the LSU 46 yard line. John Stagg coming in with some defensive suggestions for the Tiger team and Frank Racine of Freeport comes out. A minute 32 to go in the first half. LSU 7, Notre Dame nothing. Brown has a strong set to the right. Gatewood sets up on the left. He and Queenie are reversing position. And they're a little confused out there. Third down and 10. Here's Brown going back in the pocket. Deep pocket to throw. Shoots it up the middle. Intercepted by Capone at the Tiger 43. He's in Notre Dame territory to the 40. Still going down to the 32-yard line and is racked up there by John Kondrick at the Notre Dame 32. Capone, a fullback in high school at Baton Rouge Catholic High, intercepts Brown's pass at his own 43 and charges like a big bull down the field to the Notre Dame 32. Five yards on the interception return down to the Irish 32 and so let's see if the Tigers can turn it around. Leading Notre Dame 7-0. Jones in a passing condition on the field. Takes the ball. Goes back to throw. Hats the ball. Half time. Shoots it. Complete to Hamilton at the 15. He's at the 10. Hamilton scores at 13 to nothing. down the field and the cross broke inside the safety man Mike Crotty almost went to the ground at the 15 yard line put one hand on the turf and then scooted on in the end zone for the Tigers second touchdown on a pass and Hamilton has the post Jones throwing both of them and he's having perhaps his greatest night of the year Jay Michelson will try the conversion Here's the kick. It's good. Time out of the field to score. LSU 14, Notre Dame nothing. Ever notice how your car seems to catch a cold in the winter or act like it's about to have a heat stroke in the summer? Texaco's Haviland Super Premium All Temperature Motor Oil can cure a lot of your car's temperature problems. If you want to lubricate and protect your car's engine to keep it from catching cold or having a heat stroke, trust Texaco's Haviland Super Premium All Temperature Motor Oil. One minute and 14 seconds left to go in the half. Jones has just hit Hamilton with a 32-yard scoring play. The Tigers, after the successful conversion by Michelson, go out in front 14 to nothing over Notre Dame. Hill and Dominic are down deep. However, the ball goes short on a swift kick to number 19, and that's Gallagher, who receives the ball inside his 25 and runs hard out to about the Notre Dame 40 before being stopped there by Joe Winkler. The Irish, again, good field position at their 40. A minute, nine seconds to go in the first half, and LSU is surprising people on pass plays, surprising particularly the Irish football team as Jones to Hamilton has worked well for two touchdowns so far in the game. LSU really charged up, particularly after stopping Notre Dame's offensive team four times on fourth down, deep inside LSU territory. First down the Irish, Brown rolling back, draw play, gives to Gullius, here he comes for five yards. Roughly over left guard. It's filled by Perry and Cascio at the 45-yard line. It'll be second down and five on the hash mark from the near side. 56 seconds to go in the first half. Pepper Rutland in in place of Richard Piku. Rutland from Baton Rouge. Piku, Gonzalez. Second down, five. Brown again with three wide receivers to the right. Good interference. Shoots the pass. Completes the gate. What at the LSU 41? Down he goes with Norm Hodgins on his back. And riding Gatewood down to the turf. It's a Notre Dame first down and 10 yards to go. 15-yard pass completion. Brown to Gatewood. Parker and Gatewood again a wide to the right. Notre Dame wasting no time. Have a double wing up there. Here's Brown shooting a pass out of bounds to stop the clock. And the spectator is 
clipped on the head for the football as he turned his back on it on the far side. 25 seconds to go in the first half. LSU leads Notre Dame 14 to nothing. LSU on its way to the Sun Bowl against perhaps Iowa State on December 18th. And Notre Dame on the field here with an 8-1 record voted prior to coming here not to accept any bowl bids this year. Second down and 10. Julius, top of the eye, strong set to the right. Here's uh, Brown back in the pocket. Shoots the pass down the field, out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Townsend, a possible receiver, had run down the field, way down deep behind Norm Hodgins and Tommy Casanova. Casanova and the field judge had a collision down the far sideline, or the line judge, perhaps. Willie Townsend was the deep receiver, but uh, Cliff Brown, Notre Dame quarterback, did not have sufficient time to deliver the ball to him. Third down and 10. Notre Dame at the LSU 40. 19 seconds to go in the first half. Brown again back to throw. Good protection this time. Now it evaporates on him. He thrown down for a loss at the LSU 49-yard line. Jim Ganey, with help from Tyler LaFosse, crowd him down. And time is running out in the first half. And listen to this crowd. have had the chances, the Tigers have had the passes, and the sparkling defensive play. And that briefly is the story of this first half at Tiger Stadium tonight. Walter describes the halftime for you in just a moment. That's the end of the first half with the score. The LSU Tigers 14, Notre Dame nothing. We're at halftime here at Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, with LSU in front of Notre Dame by a score of 14 to nothing. We've seen some tremendous defense on the part of the Tigers tonight, and the passing of Burt Jones has been exemplary. He did make one mistake, a fumble on the 36-yard line that kept the Tigers back deep in their own territory throughout the better part of the half. But once they got good field position after Warren Capone's interception at the Notre Dame 32, the, tire, the Tigers took only two, uh, one play to get it in, and that was a 32-yard pass to Hamilton. Hamilton has both touchdowns tonight, the 36-yard pass from Jones in the first quarter, the 32-yarder from his cousin in the second quarter. Jay Michelson has been successful on both extra point attempts. So at halftime, it's LSU 14, Notre Dame nothing. 